Hello all. Welcome to the exploiting simple buffer overflows on Win32 series at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we'll look at bad characters. So what are bad characters? Well, these are not, you know, your negative characters in movies. In exploit research, bad characters have a very special meaning. Now, in most cases in the real world, whenever you send input to a program, either locally or remotely, there is a very high chance that that input would be filtered. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. So the first example would be input delimiters. And the most common one you're going to encounter when writing exploits is 0x00 or the string terminator. Now, as an example, a program which accepts a string as input would actually scan the input you send it and the moment it goes ahead and hits a null byte or a 0x00, it would immediately stop scanning and accept everything before that as the input string and discard everything after that. Now, one other example which I can give you is HTTP header fields. So HTTP header fields have a slash R slash N at the very end as a delimiter. And if you look at the hex values of slash R and slash N, that is 0x0a and 0x0d. Now, there aren't a set of universal bad characters as you're probably beginning to understand. Depending on the application and the developer logic, the set of bad characters would pretty much be different in every single program which you would encounter, right? So why does this bother us? Now, as I mentioned, let's say, you know, you have delimiters and your shell code contains one or more of them. So as soon as the program hits that delimiter, it will go ahead, discard everything after that, and this ends up breaking your shell code. And this is the reason why bad characters are such a big problem. Now, how common are these bad characters? Well, as I mentioned, they are actually very, very common. So common that in most applications, you would encounter at least one, if not more of them. So let's begin doing a practical example with bad characters. Now, typically when you actually go ahead and take a test program, you would be limited with whatever bad character that program has. And this is where this isn't very beginner friendly because really when you're wanting to learn, I'd like you to focus just on the bad character aspect rather than worrying about other aspects of the program. So what I've done is I've created a generic bad character program. Now this eco server bad character special edition takes in the list of bad characters as a comma separated list. And depending on what you give as input, those characters would be taken as the bad ones. So let's jump right in. So you would actually find that eco server bad care special is available for download just below this video. So please download and put it inside your Windows XP SP3 VM. Now you can go ahead and drop this with an immunity. Now this program takes in a list of bad characters as input. In immunity, you can go to debug, click on arguments, and then you can pass in command line arguments to your program. So let's say I want two bad characters, 0xAA and 0x, let's say, DD, right? We click on OK. Immunity warns you that you need to restart the debug program for these arguments to take effect. This is important. So hit debug, hit restart, click a yes again. Now, based on analysis, which we've done previously, 
you would actually find that this binary is very simple to what you've seen before, uh, very similar. And remember to remove any breakpoints that you may have set. I'm just removing the one which I have already set when I was testing it. We don't need these breakpoints. Now let me go ahead, run the program. So the program is running. Now let me go to the attacker machine. Now my attacker machine has an IP address 192.168.1.10 while the victim machine has an IP address 1.20. Now I am borrowing a lot from previous videos which we've encountered in this series. So please watch them uh, if you get confused anywhere in between. I'm opening up my exploit.py which is really my remote exploit delivery template program written in Python. And we have a Python primer in Pentester Academy, which I'd highly recommend if you want to learn the language and how to use it in InfoSec. So all I'm doing, as you can clearly see, is sending a very large buffer of size 1400. And all this is going to contain is my A's, right? So let me first send this and verify that the program actually crashes. Right, so let's go ahead, send this out. And if I go in here, I can clearly see that the program clashes. And basically, we have a vulnerable program in here. Okay, fantastic. What we can also see is basically that we have all of these A's, which is really the input which we sent, right? Now let me actually break up these A's a little bit. And let's say I go ahead and break these up into 1100 and then send in actually a ton of B's, let's say 300 B's or maybe 400 B's, right? And then I restart the program again. It's already running. Send this in here. Again, we have a crash, right? And if we kind of scroll down, we can actually see all our A's. Followed by our B's. Fantastic, right? Now, what typically ends up happening is whenever there is a bad character, our input would be delimited at that point itself, right? So let's say I actually send in a different pattern. So I have another file called badcharacter.py and this generates basically the list of all possible characters which is 0x00 to 0xff is something I'm going to use within my program. And here is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to put this in between here. Paste this. So typically, if everything was working perfectly fine, right, then this entire sequence would go through. So let's actually go ahead and first do that. I'm going to go back to my arguments and let's say I'm going to remove all of these arguments. So at this point, there are no bad characters which this program has, right? So this program pretty much would end up accepting any input. So let me verify that. Let me send out, right, this huge little string. Of course, the program crashes. We have our AAs. And let's scroll down. Aha. And at this point, we have our pattern, right? You can clearly see 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7. Continues all the way to FF, right? We have FE, FF, and then we have our Bs, right? Awesome. So in the absence of any form of character filtering, any form of 
uh, you know terminators being there or delimiters being there pretty much any character you send in your shell code with your exploit is admissible and acceptable right now let's actually change this and go back and put in our bad characters 0x aa 0x dd right we'll have to restart the program hit run go back send this we see there is a crash but now when we look at our a's our a's end then we start our sequence 0 0 0 1 0 2 blah 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 and if you notice it abruptly continues but finally it gets truncated here right we basically do not seem to find anything after this and where does it end a8 a9 and as you can very well guess the next byte in the sequence is a a and because that is a bad character which is being used as an input delimiter the program immediately stops accepting input and this is really where the truncation happens so imagine if you had a large shell code uh, you know which had more characters all the b's and what not that would get truncated here right now right so the very first step is now that we've located that 0x aa is where the first truncation happens we actually could go back to our series of inputs and remove 0x aa here it is I'm going to remove this entirely and now let's go ahead and rerun the program and go back in here run the program go back here hit and enter right now let's trace through if there is a truncation at all and notice we aren't using any prior knowledge about what were the bad characters we forced on the application so we beautifully now go ahead and you know we basically go from blah 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 you know you have a and if you go down here you still have the d's and then you have d9 da db dc but if you notice after that there is a truncation which means dd is also a bad character so i go back in there back to my input and i'm going to remove dd right let me rerun the program now send the input go back in here inspect the array once again and this time around fantastically we finished FEFF and then our B's begin as well awesome right so if you notice by filtering the bad characters 0x AA and 0x DD and removing it from our input set we managed to send a large amount of data without any form of truncation or delimiting now of course you know the best part about this program is while you're learning you can always go back and add more bad characters so let's say 0x ef right as an example so let me restart the program run it go back in there send it trace through of course we are going to have a truncation as expected and where does that happen it happens after ea eb ec ed i can clearly see ee here which means ef is the problem byte i go back in there find ef remove it right i restart my program back 
now when I view my array, you'll notice everything works perfectly, right? No other byte is truncated or terminated. And then we have our Bs as well. Awesome, right? So I would highly recommend taking the bad character special eco server and changing the bad characters, you know, different invocations and ensuring that very simply with visual inspection, you can figure out the bad character for this given program. In later videos, I'll teach you how to do some amount of automation with plugins like Mona, right? But we'll keep it out at this point. In the early stages of learning, I think it's super important that you go through the painful process of manual inspection, right? I'll also talk about how to ensure that your shell code takes care of not having all these bad characters which we've uncovered in a later video. So hopefully you've enjoyed this session on bad characters, understood why they are bad and what is bad about them. And you've also figured out how to go ahead and start finding them and eliminating them from your input set. So if you're enjoying your time at Pentester Academy, we would really appreciate if you can recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.